Ever since the release of OpenVSP version 3.0 in 2015, one of the most requested features or additions from users has been the ability to model blended wing sections instead of just straight line lofted wings. While this seems like a simple enough request, it's a lot harder than you might think, and we haven't been able to deliver it until now, but not for lack of trying. We've had two major efforts to put this together in the past, and I'm happy to say that finally now, in version 3.11, we will have blended wings that uh, I'm happy enough with to release for everyone to use. OpenVSP's blended wing capability builds on the normal multi-section wing that you are already familiar with. And this is great because if you want to add a blend to an existing model, you can open it up, use your existing wing component, and add a blend to it. It's not a separate geometry component. This wing that you see in front of you is made up of four sections. There's a root section, a main wing, a transition, and a winglet. And uh, I'm going to show you very quickly how to make a wing just like this one. First thing I'll do is get rid of that wing. And we'll start by adding the default trapezoidal wing. And as you saw, that wing that we want to end up with is a four section wing. So I'm going to come in and split that wing and it splits down the middle. I'll split it again to get a root section. I'll come out here to the tip and I'll split it. So now we have four wing sections from root to tip. And the next thing I'll do is I will modify these rectangular wings to have the rough layout of the blended wing that I'm going to want. So that root section I'm going to want to have a larger root cord. Uh, the main wing section, I'm going to want to have substantially more span. So we'll increase that out to, to say nine. The transition section is going to have a very short span, say simply a half. And its tip cord is then going to be adjusted to have something more reasonable as we go to the next wing out. The next thing I'll want to do is um, add the dihedral for this model. You're going to want to turn on the rotate foil to match dihedral button. This changes the setting for the entire wing. And the first thing we'll want to do is add half of the eventual winglet dihedral to this transition section. And so we'll add in say 40 degrees of dihedral there. And we can do it in relative terms so that the winglet also rotates that 40. And then we'll go out and rotate an additional 40 degrees of dihedral for that winglet. And so now you see here we have what you may have had to use in the past with VSP in a non-blended wing that has that center section with a transition and a winglet. And now we'll go through and add the blend. You'll notice that there's a blending tab that's been added to the wing. If you come to that blending tab, you'll see that we're blending based on an airfoil. And right now we're blending at foil zero. This is the same airfoil at zero that we could add it. Let's make it say 20% thick. And you can see we have a thicker airfoil now there at the root. And when we blend, what we're really doing is changing the direction of the leading edge line or the trailing edge line at a wing section. Any typical wing section will have both an inboard side and an outboard side that can be modified. The root wing section, of course, does not have an inboard side. We can only manipulate and change the outboard side. So what you'll see at this blending root airfoil zero, we can control the outboard leading edge with this box and the outboard trailing edge with this area here. And what we want to do is change that leading edge angle by changing it to match some other value. The default value is setting it to be free. And what that does is it allows it with no constraint, allows that leading edge to find the easiest line, which in this case is a straight line loft, just like we've always done. Instead, we now have the ability to match a few different things. And we'll start on this case by matching desired angles. So if we change it to angles, you'll notice the shape doesn't change, but these angles are immediately specified. And right now the leading edge sweep of that outboard line is at 30 degrees. 
If we change that to zero, you'll see we now have an unswept section that blends and smooths out from that root. And we can do the same thing for the trailing edge, set it to angles, set that to zero, and we have a straight line section there at the root. You, of course, can control the strength of that vector, which controls how long it tries to hold that, uh, that line for. For now, I'm going to leave the strength at one. So let me rotate this wing so that we're looking top down and working out the span. Next, we'll want to work on blending the next airfoil section. And you'll see we've, we're here highlighted in red. Maybe it's a little easier if I'm on wireframe view. Uh, we're, we've highlighted this wing section in red. We're blending it. And in this case, we want to blend the inboard side of this airfoil, leaving the outboard side alone. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to match this angle, this leading edge angle, we'd like to match it to the outboard wing. Now this outboard wing happens to have what I would call, the, it's the trapezoidal wing plan form and the trapezoidal wing leading and trailing edge because it is just that straight line trapezoidal wing. And even if we change it, we still know that theoretical trapezoidal wings angles. And so what we can do is we can change this inboard leading edge, which is controlled by this upper left hand quadrant of the blend tab, and we'll change it so that the inboard leading edge matches as a constraint the outboard leading edge trapezoidal direction. And when we do that, we now see that this line matches smoothly to, to there. And we can do the same thing for the trailing edge where we want the inboard trailing edge to match the outboard trailing edge trapezoidal direction. And you can see right there, we have made that first transition. The next airfoil that we want to blend, we'll move outboard one more, is here at the beginning of that transition for the blended winglet. And in this case, we want to control and blend the outboard side, but we want it to match the inboard leading edge trapezoid on the leading edge, and the trailing edge, we want it to match the inboard trailing edge trapezoidal wing. Similarly, when we go outboard now to the base of that blended winglet, we want to blend the inboard side to match the outboard leading edge trapezoid and the outboard trailing edge trapezoid. And that's it. We can shade this wing and what you see now is we've built a wing that embeds the design intent that you presumably want to have these smooth transitions between a blended section and a straight wing section and on out the span. The nice thing about this is the primary wing sections still work. So for example, you can treat the starting and ending sections as the trapezoidal sections. And for example, if you want to twist this winglet. You can twist the base of it and if we use uh, relative settings then the entire winglet will twist. There's minus five to five degrees and then of course we can go to the outboard section and we can twist it say another minus five or a plus five. And so we have the ability to twist and tailor this winglet, uh, change the dihedral, change its sweep and all these parameters while still smoothly maintaining a reasonable wing shape in between. Well, that's about it. Blended wing is hopefully easy to use once you understand what's meant by matching the leading and trailing edge line vector at each blend section, the inboard and outboard sides. This is Rob McDonald, and I really look forward to seeing what you all create with this.